And um, so the beloved in this poem is female. And um, I'm going to read a couple of these more spiritual poems. My beloved's eyes. When you first came to me and I looked into your eyes, I died as Moses warned and did not die. I wept. As the sun pulls the apple blossom inside out, your eyes drew me. I became Whitman's spider, Kabir's dolphin, Augustine's circle. The fact that your eyes are dark with the dust of galaxies wholly undoes me, and I see that that undoing is what we long for and turn away from in anyone's eyes. As on that hungover morning, walking the streets of Atlanta, looking for Garcia Lorca, when I caught the blues of an army vet with a Colt 45 on the fire escape steps. Uh, this one is called Fire Sermon. Fire Sermon. The world is burning, said Heraclitus and Buddha and Jesus in his way, and before them the rishis of the Vedas. Aiden and I huddle outside the tent. Orange coals, yellow flames, sapphire hold our gaze. Across the horizon, Draco flies. Hold out your hands. Feel how warm? Don't grab at the flames. The world is like this too, though I don't say that. Love with its own fire. Simone Veil found the spark in the difference between looking and eating. A sannyasi leaves home, puts on a saffron robe, becomes a walking flame. Um, so, you know, the divine is mostly female in this book, but there is some gender switching that happens. And so there's a little bit of gender switching on this one, so I'll read this one. Let's see if there's any questions. It's called When God Wakes Up Inside You. When God wakes up inside you, you'll lift your head like a sunflower in a field where the drops of dew have risen to the blood to, sorry, let me start again. When God wakes up inside you, You'll lift your head like a sunflower in a field where the drops of dew have risen to the tips of every blade of grass. You'll be that bead of iridescence, ready to be taken up in the air. On the day God turns to you those dark forest eyes, you'll find yourself in a theater watching an opera of your life, standing up and yelling, I thought it was a tragedy, I thought it was a tragedy. And when she comes from her bath, perfumed and newly robed, do you think you'll ever get that grin off your face? And when her robe falls to the floor, did I say hers? Did I mean his? Oh, the chosa ventura. The rest of the day, the rest of your life, you'll see those eyes everywhere, looking into the architectures of light. Then only dancing will make sense, breathing her breath, is until you find yourself looking out the irises of every stranger's eyes. Okay, um, I'll just read a couple more. So this one is called When I First Pulled Onto the Highway of Love. And this is um, after a line of Mirabai. Mirabai was a a uh, 15th century uh, Indian aristocratic woman who had a kind of spiritual experience and she left her aristocratic life and she became a wandering, uh, begging sadhu uh, and decided she needed to be really in touch with her originary innocence, kind of like Walt Whitman, and so she went around naked. Mm -hmm. So she wandered around naked in India singing songs to God and everybody thought she was crazy. So anyway, um, the title is kind of...
kind of based on the first line is from a line of hers, except she said the path of love and the highway. When I first pulled onto the highway of love all those years ago, no one told me I couldn't ever get off. Or perhaps someone did, but when does a lover ever listen to talk like that? I tried. There was the rollover when my Subaru flipped on the median, windshield splinters choreographed in slow motion. But it seemed I had more lives to live. And there was the time I got off on an access road that just wound right back onto another entrance. How could I have known, beloved comedian, that all the roads were yours? That every exit, billboards for the Mandalay, Bellagio, Four Seasons, and Ritz, with heated pools and tropical gardens, personal attendants, runways of delicacies, and a Khufu pyramid ice bar with over 100 varieties of vodka, had all been arranged by your hand like a child's train set. And anyway, after so many 24-hour all-you-can-eat extravaganzas with Vegas performers, high-wire high hookers, and then surfing the cable through the wee hours from a jacuzzi in another slate and marble bathroom, I just climbed back into the pickup and hit the road. Besides, ever since that dream when you placed that prasad on my tongue, nothing else tastes any good anymore. I filled up at the last gas Exxon, got back in, and there you were, riding shotgun, looking at the map. Now, I don't give a fig where we're going. All your sweet talk about Paradise, California, and the cities of the Celestial Empire is interesting, all right. I just forgot how much I love to drive. The highway's raven straight, and there's no, luck, no one on it but us. Saffron Alpenglow lights the white Sierras, and I switch on the radio in cruise control, and you give me that sidelong glance, slide over and lay your perfumed head on my shoulder. So I'll just read one more, it's a short one. This is the last poem in the uh, book. It's called After the Sun. <clears throat> After the sun goes out and earth that blue-green pearl breaks apart. I'll be out there looking for you. And when I rest my head among the jade and purple petals of your sari, breathing an air like the roses of Andalusia, one white blossom broken from its stem will float the river of my heart, anchor in that chambered cove where I first found you. Then we'll laugh, leaning back, watching the little universes come and go. And I'll dip my cup in your starry bowl where Hamsa, the swan, sings in the night sky. Thank you.